there's an article online on history.com, and it's called 10 Grizzly Papal Deaths, and Sixtus II is one of them. It is said while he was in his Episcopal chair addressing the congregation inside a Roman cemetery, on August 6, 258 AD, imperial troops stormed the liturgical service, and the pontiff was beheaded along with four deacons. And the reason he was beheaded was the Emperor Valerian ordered an edict of persecution, which made it binding upon the Christians to participate in the national cult of pagan gods, and it also forbade them from assembling in cemeteries, threatening them with exile and death, anyone who was found disobeying the order. But interestingly, even in Roman culture, sometimes they would make pilgrimages to family cemeteries, and sometimes they would even have feasts at the grave sites. It was a kind of remembrance of the dead. And the Christian culture did the same thing, but they worshipped Christ in the process. Most likely the gathering around was praying for the dead, or maybe they were having a Christian mass for the dead in the necropolis, where all this took place. But most importantly, we are left with the ancient words of St. Cyprian, who taught the early Christians how to face these situations bravely when governments make unjust laws or overreach with their power and they attack Christ and his church. As he says, after the martyrdom of St. Sixtus II and the deacons, I ask you to make these facts known to the rest of our fellow bishops in order that by the exhortation of their pastors, the brothers everywhere may be strengthened and prepared for the spiritual combat. Let all people fix their minds not on death, but rather on immortality. Let them commit themselves to Lord in complete faith and unflinching courage, and make their confession with joy rather than in fear, knowing that in this contest the soldiers of God and Christ are not slain, but rather they win their crowns. For throughout history, this is not uncommon, that bodies of government hate the church or even try to destroy her, and I believe it is usually because they often think they are above Christ and wielding their power, or Christ stands in their way of their ill use of power. And the church usually bravely confronts them. But in the end, Christ conquers all and judges all. And this is also historically proven.